Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we have five quick new knives. One of these, this one, is mine. I did purchase this from White Mountain Knives. It's a White Mountain Knives exclusive. This is the real steel G-frame. It comes in S35VN titanium frame lock. Now, I did just get this um, yesterday or the day before. One of the two. But... It did come with a couple little issues and normally I don't like to talk about little problems I get on a knife before I review it because some of which usually work themselves out. However, these are a couple issues that aren't, are not just going to work themselves out. I'm going to have to do something about this. Now I do understand most people I would recommend right away. Just send it back. Don't, don't mess. Just send it back. But I'm stubborn and I, I tend to like to. Not that I want to get knives with issues. Don't think of it like that. But I like to fix the knives and teach people how to fix some of these issues. Because I know in a lot of cases, people can't send the knives back. Or maybe they wind up getting these issues later on. So one of the problems... Well, first, let me just go over the knife a little bit. Then I'll show you some of the problems. So we have S35VN. Beautiful, or at least a, a decent looking satin finish. Relatively thin grind. Only 100,000 thick blade stock. Nice and thin. Nice and thin behind the edge. The action, I mean, not it's it's got a, a decent detent. The um the flipper tab is well jimped. It is a little pokey, but I don't use it like this. You can though, you can push button it, but I prefer the light switch method, especially with this knife. But the detent is it's okay. I, I mean it's not phenomenal, it's not great, it's not too strong, it's not too light, but I mean, maybe a little light. Maybe it could be a little stronger because I can I can easily fail it. However, I can also reliably flip it 100% of the time, every single time, without fail. So, it's not too light. Too light would mean sometimes I fail it. It's not like that. It's just, it can, you know, if I try to, I can easily fail it. Now, is that, does that mean it has too light of a decent? I don't think so, just because I can reliably flip it every time. And not like it takes effort or anything. If I just regularly flip it, it'll flip out every time. So, it's a reliable flipper. Now, the access to the lock bar is pretty decent. Um, the drop on it, it's a light blade, so I don't expect it to be false shut action or anything. And I can easily just give it a little smackaroo, um, a little encouragement, and it will drop shut. But... On its own, no. It is not drop shutty. It's not fall shutty. But it's still, you know, somewhat smooth. Um, I did feel in the pivot. I can feel the balls just a little bit. So I honestly think a little bit of adjusting and cleaning will, will make this action even better. Now, the titanium frame lock look, does look nice. We do have the wire clip. You can see one of the issues already. This wire clip shifts back and forth and creates scratches right there. I, I just got it, so it doesn't take much. Um, stop pins. It's an internal stop pin. You can see it right there. Hopefully, if you can't, not that big of a deal. And they give you this little cutout right here to, to give you a little bit more access to the flipper tab and then make it thicker back here for the grip, which it is a compact knife. And I do kind of like, like the CEO kind of look, you know, where it's just all slim, um, knife hidden inside the handle type style. And we have a reversible pocket clip. Now, what are some of my issues? One, this is not a problem with the knife, but with me, T6 pivot. What are we talking about? A T6 pivot. I don't like that. Next thing, all the other knives on this video will go really fast. <laughs> um, T6 pivot, I don't like that. Next thing, centering is holy cow off. Like not a little bit off, it is way off. Now I have been flipping it, but right out of the box it was off. Um, maybe it came a little bit more off as I've been flipping it, but I did adjust it one time with the, with the pivot to see if it would go back to centered. No, it does not. Not without me doing other stuff. My, you know what I'm trying to say. But I did try to adjust the pivot, and that's how I found out it was a T6. And the other, like this is a T5 or something. This is a T6. Uh, so T6 body screws, including the pivot. Next thing, 
I have Lock Rock. I could totally fail this thing if I wanted to. If I put enough pressure on the spine, it will fail. Did I do that? No. Because I don't want it to be worse than it is. Um, I'm hoping I can do something about it. I'm hoping I can fix that. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. So that's really the biggest issue is that lock rock issue. I don't like the T6 pivot and it is not centered at all. And the action could be improved. Not. I don't want to say that. I think the action, because the action's good right now, but the action I think will get even better after I fix those issues. Now, like I said, if if it was you, send it back. Don't don't mess with that. Just send it back. Let them deal with it. Next knife. We're gonna go through these ones pretty quick. The Ganzo F721. The F721. It is an automatic. Um, good action. It's not like the strongest thwack. It's not like a protec thwack, but it's reliable. And even if I pull it just to right here, it'll still open up all the way. A lot of autos don't get the momentum to open themselves back up. So the spring is consistent all the way. So even though it's not like a, a wham type of auto, it's very reliable. It opens up reliably 100% and you can close it one-handed. So I kind of like that. It's not uh, it's not crazy powerful, but it gives me benefits that it's not because a lot of autos like Protex that are crazy powerful, you can't always close one-handed or at least without caution. You know what I mean? With this one, I can easily do it. Um, Nice button on it. It does not have a, a, a secondary lock or anything. At least I haven't found one. But not a big deal. I don't really worry about accidentally deploying the autos. However, this button you do have to... Like if I just push it a little bit, it won't do nothing. You see it's pushed in right now. I have to actually push it all the way in to get it to go off. Nice stop pin size. Ganzo usually does have decent size stop pins. Beautiful G10. It's like a peel ply G10. Um, nice and grippy. Stainless steel all the way around. Um, the one, uh, one thing, though, I'm not a big fan of tip down, um, especially with an auto. You know, I'd hate for the button to get pushed, which I don't think it can because if you look, like, let me show you something. When I deploy, you see how the button's pushed up right now? Watch this. Oh, I'll move my hand. See the buttons up? I can push it down. That's all the way to flat now, where which means I can't push it farther than that without pushing into the button. See, I'm all the way in. It's even pressed past the flat zone. Now you get past that point, and it'll go off. So I, I'm not worried about it going off in the pocket. However, I just you know personally would rather have it face this way and if something did happen it would go up against my pants um awesome knife though it is pretty cool um 440c um decent geometry locked up so solid that surprises me because a lot of autos or button locks lots of button locks have play in this direction this thing is as solid as an auto can get or as solid as a button lock can get very impressive next this is the Tactical Gears. That's it. Tactical Gears. Oh, ooh, strong detent. <laughs> tactical Gears. Okay, so we have Titanium and D2. CPM D2. Is that going to be as good as USA CPM D2? I doubt it. But D CPM D2, uh, nevertheless, I'm not... <laughs> You know, I, I don't have no reason to doubt that it's not real CPM D2, um, possibly on LTK's channel. If he's tested these, you can find out. The grind is oh so thick. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Doesn't even make sense how thick this thing is. Titanium frame lock does have some really cool milling and the rock pattern. No rock pattern on this side. We have a spring clip. Ooh, lots of tension on that boy. Um... Steel lock bar insert, so, you know, you're probably not going to get lock stick. The action's pretty good. Decent detent. You can push button it or light switch it. 
the drop is very very smooth man this thing is very smooth i'll give it that it, it the action is amazing uh centered pretty good uh i can touch the blade if i run my finger up a certain way but it's not a big deal it's not like i'm touching it like this i have to actually like try but this blade is so thick <laughs> it doesn't make sense i guess if you're wanting a pry bar slash Sometimes I cut things knife. This is this is awesome. This is right up your alley. You could open things up with this edge right here. Bam, go around boxes and stuff to cut the tape. You could possibly use this for something, but you could use, you know, this front part of the edge to wedge in between things and pry things maybe. Because it's not going to cut good, guys. This will not. Now, the ergos are decent. Um, not, gr not phenomenal, but, I mean, they're decent. Um and you get good leverage but this grind is just re look at this this is how thick the blade stock is so this is how thick it is right here before it drops down to the edge think about how slicey it can be dropping down from this thickness right here at this line down to this cutting edge it's impossible i mean unless if it had like the deepest hollow grind you've ever seen or you know whatever uh but yeah, that's a thick boy. And if you sharpen this thing, one, the, the edge bevel, if you sharpen it at 20 degrees per side, it the edge bevel is going to be like up to here. <laughs> it's thick. I don't know what it is behind the edge, but I imagine after a good sharpening, the, it, the thickness would be, you'd be measuring in a different place. Let's just put it that way. You'd be measuring way up the blade after sharpening this thing. But, you know, it's cool. Um, I imagine it's very, very affordable just not very useful unless if you're using it for multi-tool tasks oh also thanks to cue ball for sending all the other knives aside from the first one on this list i appreciate him with all the support he's given us thank you thank you so much cue ball we love you and appreciate all the support man two more so we have the tucson ts192 this is an M390, and it's a Mazwa Mokhtar, one of my favorite Tucson designers. This thing is pretty awesome. It is really awesome. Very slicey. Uh, let's go with the pull first. Let's start there. So, nice uh, swedge right here. Oh, you know what? Let's start with the carbon fiber. This is gorgeous carbon fiber. It has, well, because it's, the, it's contoured. It's like, um, it's very wide or not wide. It's, we'll go through it, man. It, it's not thick, not too thick, but it is contoured. So it's slim in a way it's slim for the, how wide it is here, how wide it is in this direction. It's slim in this direction. You know, if you guys understand what I'm saying, but the, the carbon fiber is you get a lot of cross cut section. See that all the fibers. I love that. It's so nice. Now, obviously, the real side cut section is right here. And that looks so beautiful. I love that look of that side cut section. But you get a little hint of it, kind of, you know, like it's the, obviously while, you know, it's being cut um, to, to contour. I'm trying to get to come up on camera. It's hard. There we go. You can see the fibers. I love that. Now, the pull on it, nice and strong. Nice, strong pull, but you have so much leverage, you know, grabbing this thing. You get a lot of texture on this. Not a lot of texture, but there's enough texture. So the pull is pretty easy. Nice snap. The blade has a beautiful satin finish on it that has my fingerprints on it, but this is the M390, so it's actually not as bad as like their... They're Sandvik steels, but decent satin, almost like a mirror satin. Nice and thin behind the edge while having really good geometry because it's such a tall blade. This thing will slice so good. I can tell this thing will slice. Yes, you will get a little bit of uh, resistance from the fuller, but pff, I don't think it'll matter. Um, now holding this thing this thing is super comfortable i do feel this little hump right here in my palm but i'll explain why it feels very comfortable with that 
if I hold it in this direction, it's not that comfortable. It's okay. I'm not saying it's bad, but that's when all of a sudden I can feel the thinness. I can feel this edge right here a little, a little bit. Mostly I feel the edge here on the spine in my hand because like I said, it for the how wide it is here or how broad it is here, it's not uh, very thick here. So when I go from this grip, you know, like the push cut grip, which I can absolutely do and turn it to this grip, this turn right here or this curvature of the handle goes right into this part of my palm and it nestles itself so comfortably. This thing is very comfortable and oh man, could I get some force down on this thing. And it just feels like it wants to utility cut something. I, I swear, as soon as I opened it, I instantly wanted to do a utility cut. Like I just wanted to, to cut something because it just, it feels like it wants to. Very, very cool. I like that it's M390, no pocket clip, T8 hardware all the way around. Very, very cool. The clothes on it. Nice acoustics or nice walk and talk. Very cool. All right, last but not least, we do have another slipper. The Tucson TS-197. This one is in real bone with a little lizard artwork there. And uh, I think this is a lizard and then this is like a fly or something, I'm guessing. Very, very cool. You can actually see the bone you know like um some of the imperfections which you're always going to get with bone it's bone so that's kind of the beauty of it it's natural it's real i don't see what kind of bone it is i'm guessing uh uh pro i have no idea but i'm going to guess probably cow bone that's usually the kind of bone that's the most affordable but let's do a poll i oh this thing has great walk and talk let me get the mic closer. Amazing walk and talk. And I love this blade shape. A spear point blade. Oh, it's, I'm going to say it's a spear point. The tip is slightly higher than our actual spear point. You can see we have a little bit more belly here than we have on the top part. However, it's perfect. It's great. It's such a beautiful blade shape. I love this blade shape, especially on this little, on a little slippy like this. This will be so useful. You could do utility cuts easy. You got a little bit of belly. You could do a push cut if you really wanted to. No, it's not insanely slicey geometry but it is very reasonable but it does have quite a thick blade stock that's the one downfall to this blade right now is it does have a little bit of a thicker blade stock however sometimes people do want a little bit of a thicker blade stock even with a smaller knife like this because it does add to the durability of the knife they could possibly get away especially with a, a little bit of a blunted tip you can get away with a little bit of light light duty prying you know with while being confident we have m390 steel and it does get down to a reasonably thin edge so this thing will cut just fine i mean no it's not a laser beam but you know, in a lot of slip joints, that's kind of the beauty of them is that they are laser beams. In this case, it's kind of like a, a mid-range type of grind, but it's a beautiful grind. I mean, I think it looks beautiful. I think it is well done. They did do a nice tall flat on it. They didn't go like halfway down. You can see we have a little uh, the thickness right here, and then it instantly starts going down to the edge. Beautiful, man. This thing is gorgeous. Um, the liners, um, I don't know if they're titanium or steel. Um, I guess I could check really quick. They are titanium. Okay, we have titanium liners, uh, steel back spring, supposed to be though. Um, nice, man. This thing is really cool. Nice and comfortable four finger grip. It is long enough for four finger grip. This is a perfect size. Um, slippy. You could easily put this down into a nice little slip, drop it in your pocket, or just drop it like it is. And, you know, let it... Man, that walking dog is so nice. Um, but there you guys go. I love you guys. I thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like. Peace.